This is a traditional Assamese muga mekala sadar. It is prepared out of golden silk thread produced from muga worm. Muga is the native production of the state of Assam. People of Assam rear this muga worm and from the worm muga silk threads are produced and different apparels for men and women are prepared. The village people of Assam have their own farms to rear this muga worm which is called sumoni. The worm eats the leaves of the sum tree and that is why it is called sumoni. The life cycle of muga worm has four stages. The complete life cycle lasts 50 days in summer and 150 days in winter. The cycle starts when a mature moth emerges from the cocoon during the dusk after about two to four weeks for formation of cocoon depending upon the environmental temperature. Locally, the emergence is called Muga Kokua. The emerged moth remains soft and the body and the wing hardens soon after in the air. The male moth possesses a pair of large antenna which serves as organs of smell, touch, and receiver of sound. The color of the wings of the males are deep brown and the female has a lighter color. The male moth is active and the females rest passively. After emergence, the male moth searches for female moth for pairing. The rearers tie the female of the pair on a bundle of straw which is known as khorika with a string of thread. The khorikas are placed either in a row or in circle duly numbered. The khorikas are kept hanging in a room with sufficient space. The coupling moth gets separated after a day. Since the coupling remains for a single day, sometimes the rearers cannot tie all the pairs in the same day and so the next day they are found separated. The fecund female alone is tied on the same korika and they are hung in the same manner. Hi. From Aegis, the method of tying the female on a korika has been applied by the rearers. Presently, a new technique has been developed by some experts where the females are kept inside a bag which is made of plastic net. The holes have ventilation and the female lay eggs inside the bag. From evening to dawn, a fecund female lays eggs inside the plastic bag or in the surface of the korika 
and the deposition continues for 3 to 4 days. Since the eggs are kept for reproduction, the moth is examined properly through a microscope after laying eggs. If she is found disease free, the eggs are kept for the next generation. For collection of eggs, the hanging korikas with the females are brought from the room and the females are removed from the korikas by cutting the tied thread. From such korikas, the cluster of eggs are collected. A moth lays about 250 eggs and eggs laid in the first 2 to 3 days are collected for rearing and rest are discarded. Egg deposition in the last days is very less and the eggs are not healthy. So, the second stage of the life cycle of Muga is the eggs. The collected eggs are then washed with 2% formalined water for 5 minutes and then pure water in order to destroy any trace in febrine parasite. At this stage, the parasite remains in a vegetative form and therefore it is very easy to destroy them. Direct sunlight may kill the embryo inside the eggs. The eggs are dried in open air in the shade and such dry eggs are preserved as seed. The third stage is the larva. The larva hatches at dawn by boring the egg cells with a secretion from its head. After hatching, the young larva starts sewing the egg cells. The hatching completes within two hours. The tiny larva has a tendency to disperse in search of food soon after. So, in the hatching place, they are supplied with a number of small branches with the leaves of the host plant. As soon as they get the branches, they start crawling on the branches and start feeding. Such branches are then transferred and hung from the food plants and so they are now transferred to the Zoom farm from house. The larva then starts crawling again on the host plant and feed on tender shoots. The young larva continues eating from the margin of the tender leaves. The quality of the leaf is important for producing good cocoon. When larvas are defoliated from a tree completely, the larva starts descending to the base. They are then picked up gently and shorted out according to size and placed in a triangular bamboo sheet. These sheets are then hung up again on a bushy plant. The larva takes one to three months to be mature depending on the temperature of the season. The larva changes its skin four times. Plastic rings are tied around these plants to stop them from dispersing in any direction and crawl down. The ripe worm descends to the base of the tree at sunset and remains motionless for some time. The size of the worm shrinks and the body color is slightly altered. The mature larva excretes a kind of liquid flaws accompanied by two or three numbers of excretors. 
the larva makes a hollow sound if rolled gently in between two fingers. The ripe larva are collected in a basket known as khora and then they are transferred to a leafy dry cocoonies called zali. The spinning starts after some time in the leafy cocoonies. Initially, the cocoon appears whitish but later on it changes to golden and this is the fourth stage of muga. The silk derived out of the winter cocoon are fine and glossy though the cocoons are flimsy. Out of the harvested cocoon, the good ones are set apart and kept separately in a safer place for rearing in the next generation. The other cocoons are sorted out and stifled for reeling. Stifling is done by exposing them to the strong sun or hot air which kills the chrysalid within the cocoon without damaging the cocoon shell. The intensity of the color as well as shape and size of the cocoon depends also on the type of the host plant used. The size is also affected by the type of cocoonase or overcrowding in the cocoonase. For producing fabric, such cocoons are boiled in alkaline solution or car for about 15 to 30 minutes. The time depends upon the strength of the solution and the quality of the cocoon. This procedure removes the natural gum that is contained in the silk. A cocoon is composed of a single silk fiber length of which is about 350 to 400 meter though it varies depending upon the rearing season. The outer surface of the cocoon is flossy and beneath the layer of the floss, the actual fiber lies in a range in a continuous line in the shape of a loop. After removal of the floss, the inner fiber is drawn out one by one by passing over the wheel. For good reeling, the essential conditions are firstly, on being pulled out, the natural fiber should come up naturally for which the gummy substances which binds the fiber together should be softened in order to find the end. Secondly, the fiber should come out in a continuous line without breaking. Efficient reeling depends on the cocoon from healthy brood. When taking out from the reeling basin, an additional twist has to be given to the threads. No part of Muga cocoon is discarded. The inferior and the flimsy cocoons along with the silk vest are spun separately. Muga yarn which is to form the wrap has to be sized as in the case of other varieties of silk in order to bind loose fabric with the body of the thread and also to add strength to the thread. And from this, apparels for men and women are prepared in a beautiful manner. <laughs>